Well, here we go. Let's come to the realization that Carcino is the greatest. Uh, some of you guys have not followed this yet, or just for the views and still hanging on to the last bit of hope you got. No, I won't let go. Okay. Just say the greatest. Oh, I just can't do it. Let go. No. It's like that scene on Lost Boys and they holding on to the train. Now, here's the scenario in which I'm talking about. All today I'm reading these comments, and I told you that this would happen after the Golden State game. I said the players are going to start to turn on one another. Did they? I told you that. I said the players are going to start to turn on each other. Isn't that what happened? Isn't that what happened? One hundred percent that's what happened. The players anonymously go into the papers, the coaches anonymously, and they're turning on each other. But reading the comment section of the fans and all the people, it's hilarious because I've been here for three years. This stuff is, people act like this is brand new stuff. This has been here like this for the past like three, four years. And I'm sitting here laughing, looking at all this. Man, LeBron got to learn to do better on playing off the ball, man. He's got to do <laughs> I'm cracking up laughing because this is like, I've been telling you this for three years. <laughs> I'm like, I've been saying this for years about LeBron. And now everybody is saying my words and I'm just sitting back and laughing. This is funny to be entertaining, watching everybody get into these arguments about what's wrong with the Cavs. Oh, man, it's just like the king sitting on the throne just watching his court just just, just have discussions and then just laughing like, oh, my God. <laughs> I've been saying this for the past four years. We're getting absolutely nothing out of J.R. and Tristan Thompson, man. J.R. and Tristan, they've got to step up. Why? I mean, and Chad and Fry, this just isn't working. Why do we have Chad and Fry? <laughs> oh God! I swear! Oh my! You guys are amazing, man. I—I I mean, I gotta applaud you. You guys are amazing, and for those who've been following me all this time, laugh at these guys and tell them, "Yeah, he's told you. Just been listening." Didn't listen. So now, here's the scenario. The players are now saying and echoing the sentiments of what I've been saying all along. LeBron is a player that's not going to change. They're not going to get any help. They feel help isn't coming, which it isn't. Help isn't coming. So if you're thinking somebody's going to magically swoop down to save you, guess what? They're not. <clears throat> Your team sucks. And that's just it. The NBA is giving you your best chance to win. Now, can they get DeAndre Jordan? Sure, if they're willing to let go of the draft pick. If DeAndre Jordan is traded without that draft pick to Cleveland for a bunch of players, the NBA made that trade. And with that trade, it's not going to help Cleveland's plight. They're not one player away from fixing a problem. 
And I thought LeBron made everything work. I thought he made everything better. Why are y'all crying now? When they got all these players, you know what they said? Oh, man, Cavs is, man, we're going to do great. Now they're talking, man, we, we get D. Rose back. I thought it was when you got Isaiah Thomas back. Now it went from, oh, wait till we get Isaiah Thomas back to wait till we get D. Rose and Isaiah Thomas back. Okay. So you're going to put your stock in a player that was hurt from twisting his ankle in a game in like the earlier part of the season. You're going to hinge your playoff and championship hopes on D. Rose coming back. Wow. I'm just, I'm flabbergasted right now. The level of just denial of the people is amazing. With all they have, they are still not a better team than Boston. They're probably not even better than Toronto right now, to be honest. Toronto's better than them. They're not better than almost 17 teams on the West. They're in a dogfight with everybody now, from Milwaukee to whatever. But they won't be able to beat the Cavs probably four times. The rest could help, and they still wouldn't win. You know, against Golden State, the refs could help you as much as they can, but there's only so much they could do. You got to do the rest. And the way the gameplay went, and I told you guys yesterday what Isaiah Thomas did was, yeah, he's getting his legs back and running in there, but he's not playing with it within the team. He's running down there shooting jump shots before guys can get a chance. They, they're running sprints trying to keep up with what's going on, and you're running and burning their legs out while you're missing these shots. Because Golden State's just going to run back down the court and throw an outlet and get a layup or a dunk. So, yeah, keeps gunning. You're only getting your team tired, and they're going to keep running and getting alley-oops and dunks and everything else. So they'll keep that pace going because they know you're going to burn out and they're going to be okay. Because they're young, you're old. They rest players, you don't. And even with the rest, LeBron, once he hits the wall, he's done. There is no second boost for him. There isn't no light at the end of the tunnel. When LeBron James hits the wall, and normally when he plays Golden State, he hits it in the third quarter. I've seen him hit the wall in about three straight games in the third quarter. And he never gets it back in the fourth. He didn't even play in those fourth quarters Then he hit the wall. When they played Toronto, he hit the wall. When he played against Minnesota, he hit the wall. And he got out the game. And he only played three quarters. So he had a lot of rest. And then in the end, he hit a wall too. Wasn't as bad, but he hit the wall. So how many times are you going to keep hitting the wall, getting up, and doing the same thing over again? That's all it comes down to. Cleveland is in trouble. This is not like previous years. Like last, for the past three, four years, I'm used to the Cleveland losing in January. Last year, at this time, it was, we, we, we top heavy as a mug. We need some help. He always needs some help, don't he? But he's supposed to be Jordan. He's supposed to be Kobe. But he's crying for people. Every year, he needs to have an all-star team in order for him to compete. But he's supposed to be so good, right? Yeah, exactly. So now people got to build a team around LeBron in order for him to go and do something. I've never seen people publicly cry for other players around him. He, LeBron James has had the most help of any champion in the history of basketball. I will repeat that so that you can go back, use your mental bank, no championship team in basketball history has had more help 
than LeBron James in his entire NBA career. Go back and look at the players that LeBron James have had to help him win a championship and compare that to Jordan, Kobe, Tim Duncan, any player who has won an NBA championship, you can go back to Larry Bird and the Boston Celtics. You can go back to Magic Johnson and the Los Angeles Lakers. No player in the history of this world in the NBA has had more help than LeBron James. Now you go look that up and tell me, am I wrong? So how is this guy a king of basketball? It's insulting to every player that played in the 90s, 80s, 60s, 70s, whatever you want to call. It's an insult because he's clearly not the best player in the NBA today. And for my boy T, my boy T, he's delusional. He likes to hang in the past. It takes him a little longer to get to where I'm at. He's here now. He understands now. But he still wants to hold on to a little remnant and says, well, you never saw nobody his size, you know, move with that kind of speed and do the things that he do. Nobody his size, his athleticism is not in question. His athleticism is why he's here. We all know that. He's been getting by on his athleticism since high school. In 15 years, he has not changed and evolved his game. He can't play with a real coach because he likes to be the coach. He likes to do what he wants to do. That's why all the coaches he won with has been very inexperienced. He won with a guy that was in the film room. Study film. That's all he did. Shane Battier was the one coaching him when he was in Miami. Getting him better to recognize defenses. I told you guys this. But you guys didn't believe me. Because you just hate to admit that somebody is not just here hating on the man. I'm actually giving you reasons and facts and truths. So... Y'all take that to the bank and tell me what you think. I'm out.